Hey, it's Misha Owen of Bite Size Irish, and I spoke with Pader, who's a member of Bite Size Irish, to find out about how he achieves Gaelga Gach La Irish every day. We go into a bit of his motivations too, how come he's interested in the Irish language in Gaelga. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Jihut is Misha Owen from Bite Size Irish, and today I'm joined by a Bite Size Irish member. Fjader, Fjader, Giorit. Yes, very good, Sean. Can I sit to you, Fjader? Ah, Neil Ruddy, good on a lum. Umtuch, umtuch. Tasha Quisach, te liata in yov. Ah, roge, rohe. Mahan fair. I threw that one in. Mahan fair, Fjader. Uh, yeah, it's it's. I think it's way too hot here at the moment. Oh, you know? okay. So, um, because I'm working from home. Um, I wish I could go back because they have aircon. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, Peter, you're like I said, a bite size Irish member. You're a grow member, so you get access to bite size bubble. And these days, bite size bubble bubble means community, uh, and it's really the heart of bite size Irish. Whereas, coming up to a year or two ago with bite size. It was all about lessons, studying on your own, and we wondered what can we do to better connect people and pull people together and uh, help people motivate each other. So, Pad, we'll start with the present, but we'll then we'll dive into your past a bit to understand how you got here. Okay. So, what is bite size purple in your mind? Um, I suppose it's, it's the name itself, Pubble Community, the people you meet. Um, the, the journey as you go along, you sort of, um, you can sort of help others, others help you. So definitely sort of learning together, I think is a benefit, um, compared to just kind of learning by yourself. Yeah. You know, and that's the one thing that's, I think once, um, I got over my, I suppose my shyness, um, and diving in that I think, um, it, it's actually given me confidence to, to, to move forward. Mm. Um, and that's definite because before. Um, I, I joined. Um, I wasn't really doing sort of many sort of say, Hubble sessions, uh, joining in um, with stuff. So mm -hmm. it, it's definitely brought me along, you know. And I Excellent. think once you get over that hurdle, the the, the initial to um, to just just get on and, and do it, then you know the rest of it comes just kind of falls into place. I like it. I'll ask you more about that. And mm -hmm. like you said, you've been a regular attendee of Bites as Bio which is part of Bite Size Bubble. So for you, what is Bite Size Bio? Uh, well, I suppose it's a chance to kind of um, hear myself out loud mm -hmm. um, uh, to try and actually speak, you know, or at least even though it's scripted, to actually sort of um, talk through and trying to pronounce. Because um, I think it all started, I think, with um, the Cardolin last year. Mm. Um, that when I did the, the two-week two, two week course with yourself and uh, I think Siobhan and, and Gabrielle, that uh, that was, I think I may have said it back then, that it was like turning on a light switch. Mm. That once you sort of get the groundings behind the pronunciations, certain other things then fall into place. Mm. Um, yeah. And be but before that, I think pronunciation, I think my pronunciation was way off. And I think there was a, a bit of trying to pronounce it as you would do in English. Mm. I think Just, a lot of people can relate to that, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the bite size bio is uh, bio means live and it's our scripted conversation practice for members because we wondered how can we get people talking and it's really hard like if you show up to a zoom call and go All right live now go on and <laughs> talk about the weather um how can you get people talking like that so the key we found is that scripted conversation enables people it it's a leveler because uh, well people still have different abilities obviously but it it draws people a bit closer uh, and mm -hmm. gives a guide and then we can find other avenues of more open conversation for more advanced people so we're always yeah. working on ideas like that so it's, that's it's a good yeah. grounding it's a good grounding mm. at the start with and expand on. And some of the phrases uh, I'm sure I've probably used um, quite a bit, you know, and then you can expand by adding extra words, time, day, place mm. to them. So, 
Now, Peter, uh, we especially like to help people at Bite Size who attend Irish classes, but that's really a shorthand for active learners, people who uh, have invested their life energy into the Irish language journey. So you don't attend classes, do you? No, not at the moment. I did have a look um, when I first, I think it was um, in around the time when I first joined, sort of well over over a year ago now, because mm. I think I'm, I've am i been with yourself since I think May, April, I think actually 2019. Wow. So that was just before you started Pubble, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I did try and ask someone in the nearest communities to me are sort of down on the coast and it's not really practical because I'm more inland um um from the coast so it, it's probably a good hour hour and a half drive and there and back it takes up a several chunk of my evening and um and so it's it's not really practical and unfortunately the one person i did find retired who was lo- located less than nine miles away from me he retired okay so that would have been superb um and he covered the winchester area so i could have easily have traveled to that so, so um, just, just about things just to put it in context, you're in Sasna in England. Yep. Yeah. Correct. People could be watching anywhere here. So, <laughs> True. so yeah. Peter, we'll go back a bit now. Um, so where were you born? What kind of family were you brought up in? Was it like an Irish family? So tell me, start at the beginning. Okay. Um, well, I'm from Cove. So um, the family is from the Cork area. Um, I suppose uh, looking at sort of some history recently, sort of um, um, found out that my family goes back more than 100 years in, in Cove on the Great Island in Cork Harbour. Um, Cove now is not is not part of the Great Lakes, which I'm sure you probably you, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it does have Grail Skulls, but it was only that was only set up in, I think, the, the mid to late 80s. Right. And so I was well past um, going there. Um, but, um, you know, the family of five, um, we didn't really speak Irish. Everyone spoke English in Cove. Probably anyone spoke Irish, or no one spoke Irish really, such, um, especially none of my friends. Um, we did it in school, obviously, from um, in primary to secondary. Um, did it for my leaving, although unfortunately, um, I think I may have failed that just because of <laughs> um, the teacher that I had at the time. Um, I just didn't get on with kind of his style of teaching. Mm. Um, so, and just to I, put that in context for people watching. The leaving certificate is the exam at the end of secondary or high school. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, I was, a, I think, a, a DC student coming up to the intermediate certificate. So uh, after after the third year. Um, but then we had a teacher who came in from an upper level uh, and who was teaching basically higher level Irish in a lower level class. Mm-hmm. And I probably wasn't the only one, but I, I certainly felt that I, I, I was lost. They set the bar yeah. way too high. Yeah, because half you, his yeah. class came down with the teacher as well. So they sort of knew what to expect from him. The rest of us didn't. So um, so I think, um, and that's of course, because I know um, I went to the, the Guelta once with um, the previous Irish teacher. Um, and, you know, for a week, enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure I came back with a few phrases, probably ones that you generally don't probably talk in front of your parents. Um, but um, but you know it was it was good. But I think um, so it was more like, until I was over here I, and I went back again for a holiday. But that's you know it, it's um, suddenly thought why sort of learn another language when I can actually learn my own mm. effectively because I've always had an interest in languages mm-hmm. um, between sort of like learning French as well in school at the same time as Irish. Um, and picking up pieces from the job I work at, you know, so, but, we, you know, we moved over, I did university, I went to university, so in the 90s, so we moved across, and so the whole family came across as well. You went uh, to university over in we England? Moved, yes, we moved across, um, just purely because um, at the job situation at the time, uh, my father sort of moved across, Yeah. we followed him, you know, and so I went to university, did engineering, still in engineering, so um, it served me well, um, or at least it shows that possibly I, I have the capacity to learn stuff, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so let's say growing up in Ireland, uh, did you have any uh, leaning towards the Irish language compared to your average student? No, probably the reverse, probably mm. at least amount, really. I probably had more of a tendency towards artwork 
anything because they huh? were kind yeah. of my best subjects artwork technical drawing uh construction studies all of that type of thing i hope i scored highest so irish um unfortunately was the lowest you know? okay so um and then like how far into your life in england did the irish language start to appear in some way well i've always been sort of saying the odd phrase um mm. you know um kind of like um you know thank you how are you yeah um, um other simple things like you know i suppose be quiet and that type of thing when you're kind of mucking around with your your friends um but it was only sort of the last year as i said last year when i went back and we went to um tipperary mm -hmm. um that i heard sort of cousins on my partner's side speak a little bit and then that sort of intrigued me oh. and that's actually what piqued my interest then um and that's what then i started searching out you know where can i kind of learn sort of online what can i do um to get the ball rolling and, and i think um it wasn't soon after i think that i found yourselves mm -hmm. and did and did the trial i think it was for a free trial for a week yeah we don't uh, do that anymore we have taster yeah. membership that's free yeah yeah so i, I did that uh, i think it was gabrielle sort of sorted us out um for that in the beginning mm -hmm. um and and everything else then is as it says, it's history. I'm here and, now. Still. And do you think that was this like uh, an underlying curiosity that you didn't listen to? Or do you really think it was you had to go through your life to get to that point to start being interested in Gaelge? Um, I don't know, because I mean, I've, it's not as if I haven't been back before home, um, but maybe it's I don't know, maybe it was just um, having sort of more time, maybe more resources to allow me to now pick it up where before, uh, maybe younger, not so much of an interest. Um, I mean, if I could go back now in time and actually tell myself that, you know, pay, pay, pay a little more attention now and it'll actually stand to you, then you yeah, certainly would do that. Um, but um, as I said, it's, it's always been sort of languages and wanting to learn a little bit of everything. Every time so, someone come new comes into the office who happens to be of a different nationality, picking up certain phrases. Mm -hmm. um, I deal a lot with Lithuania and I've actually even um, uh, picked up, um, um, I found out sort of a little sort of connection between Lith and Irish in relation to a word for journey, trip, churros. Okay. It, it actually means the same in both languages. Churros. Hmm. Actually, it means well. I think it's in Irish. It's is it a journey? Is it? Mm -hmm. um, in Lithuania, I think it's more trip, as in a you know, it's it's in like a journey. Uh, you know, because I've um, my colleague um, has a boat in our company who runs fishing tours, and it's called um, Churos. Is the name, and hmm. it's spelled still spelled the same. And -U -R -A -S. how or as? How is it pronounced in Lithuanian? Good question. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> I just know. I think he understands me when I've said it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he just calls it fish churros. Oh, I'd be interested to hear the epitomology connection there, uh, if there is one. Not necessarily, but interesting. Yeah, very yeah. good. And so a lot of people who uh, learn with bite-sized Irish, they they just tend naturally to be the people who are not in Ireland, who didn't grow up in Ireland, didn't go to school in, in Ireland. So you have a bit of a different background there mm. um, in that you did take Irish classes, whether you liked yeah. it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't, <laughs> possibly. Like, so looking at people who didn't have any Irish in school, do you have any tips or insights like what do you see kind of maybe trips people up a little bit too much more than it should maybe if you could if you have any opinion there um well i, th I suppose if you're coming from a english-speaking background to begin with I, I think that's probably the first hurdle because i think we've learning english we kind of um we take a lot of shortcuts instead of how we speak and so when you're trying to translate that into kind of grammar into another language sometimes you do get tripped up quite a bit because of the order of the language mm -hmm. you know um, especially a simple example is you know I have a dog 
Um, whereas, I suppose in Irish, you say, uh, is dog with me? Mm. Yeah, to, to mother a gum. Um, so it's kind of getting around that to begin with. Um, and sure, there's, there's other things. Obviously, pronunciation is probably one of the, maybe the bigger thing. But I suppose it's, it's taking it easy and, and taking it a, a bit by bit and, and not to um, overwhelm yourself because... Mm. Um, I think you once said that, you know, if you expect to come into this and, and expect to learn Irish after a year, um, and I'm definitely te testament to that, that after a year, yeah. you know, I can say a few things, but I'm definitely far more um, um, capable of, I suppose, reading a bit more and, and speaking, um, reading, talking um, in Irish, as opposed to when I first started a year ago, where I probably would have been having a good crack at it, um, but using English as a basis for my pronunciation oh yeah where you you know people uh have said to me like the irish language is not written according to the letters so that's one part of pronunciation right and yeah. i'll always say well it is uh there are rules there's just not english language pronunciation rules and we can of course see that it's obvious if you look at french and how they write their language okay yes. there's similar rules absolutely but their pronunciation of what's written and okay they've got a uh, linguistic legacy there where there's more letters written than pronounced maybe in places uh, but still there's different rules whether to pronounce that t or not yeah, yeah. and Tell me, um, what was that click? So you said you did the, the Cardland, the, the workshop with us last year, but uh, you mentioned the, the shyness, like you, that you had to get over this, like not, not, we're not talking about the Cardland exactly, but like, what did you change inside yourself that let you go further? Um, I, I think it was just basically a kick up the backside. Um, excuse me. Um, hope that's all right. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's just kind of wanting to, to push myself to go that if I didn't sort of take the leap that I probably wouldn't, uh, I would get stuck in a, in a, in a lull and wouldn't actually progress. Um, so, so I think is that after I, after I heard sort of, um, the cousins sort of, you know, speak a little bit, even though it was something simple, I just thought I, I would just, you know, just move um and start inquiring and seeing what i can do you know so um and i suppose it's self-belief and just keep on going um i, I suppose i do have a, a slight stubborn streak uh, which i definitely get after my mum um and not wanting to give up um so i think that's another thing as well if you're determined enough to kind of want to to learn and, and go with it you know that that's kind of that certainly is going to help okay so were you always uh, kind enough to yourself um i don't know to accept this to like because learning a language you just have to accept in a way that like i could be wrong or yeah. by default i could be wrong well I, th I think it was when we first came in um and i was um with yourselves i think um what you'd actually said about um sort of learning that you're going to make mistakes but it's it's kind of have a go um and i honestly don't mind if someone corrects me because it just means then that i'm then learning from my own mistakes yeah. you know um rather than someone not telling you and you then carry on you know uh, making the same mistake until y you might sort of embarrass yourself because you know um someone never told you or didn't want to embarrass you for for saying something incorrectly mm. um so I, I mean i think i've been saying for years and i thought it was correct and i was it was um Neil Shea five, and actually it's it's five or a bit, or it's um, uh, was it um Neil Neil five a, Neil five a, mm. yeah that's the correct way. But I was always, but it's only recently I realised, you know, um, I've been saying it long to colleagues in work, you know, on on on, on, mm. on teams or whatever all this time, thinking that was the correct way because logically I was trying to kind of do it out saying it is, uh, it's no problem. No problem, yeah yeah so and uh, do you is it easy for you to be like stand corrected or it is tough <laughs> um 
Well, I'm learning, so I yeah. know I'm going to make mistakes. Yeah. And if you if you can't sort of accept that, um, then you're, you're going to have a hard time trying to learn. Mm. You know, you you are going to struggle if you if you if you um, start having um, I don't know um, what's the word now um, obsess every time someone actually yeah. uh, tells you that that you know what you're saying there is not right. This is how how you should say it yeah um it might actually that, that type of thing might actually put you off mm. as well it just depends on your personality you know um for me um i'm grateful to anyone who actually can correct me and put me right you know mm. uh, even if i uh, someone is is less informed than i am i haven't got a problem with that it's you know if i've met so if you've made what made a mistake you said yeah yeah uh, if, if i've made a mistake i've made a mistake and if if and i'm happy for anyone who to, to, to tell me um what that is yeah. uh, to put me right so yeah and peter how do you um get yourself to show up every day or every week like at bite size irish i see you're a regular contributor, you're helping, you show up, you show up to different calls that we have, yeah. you facilitate your own calls of Bite Size Bio, which is fantastic. That's, yeah, a recent thing. Yeah. And so how do you, like, because when something starts to be difficult, it's very easy or natural to avoid it. Yeah. So you can go a week without diving into Irish you can go a month without Grail getting like, you know, a year later, you look back and you go, oh, if only I'd kept it up. So how do you just show up? Well, I suppose in part it's it's what you say is Grail go gach law. Mm. But then I add on then the end, end of that is August uh, Grail go gajoa. So Grail go gach law, August Grail go gajoa. I love it. So, um, so it's, it's part of that, and I've got that written out on my computer monitor behind mm. my iPad here. Um, so, and, and little little sticky notes of Irish around as well, just to remind me of certain things. Um, but um, even if I do, I mean, some days I just do um, five or ten minutes. Others I do a couple of hours. It depends on kind of what I fancy sort of doing. Um, so, you know, it, it's going from the verbs one day to as I said, with um, um, Garnet and, and Bridget, we have our WhatsApp as well as Sean as well, where we just kind of try and read through some kids' books, just basic books, just to kind of read. Um, and a lot of those words do back bring, bring back memories for me, um, trying to write little essays in, in secondary. Um, and of course, Kuig. Um, it's amazing how often you actually use that and now suddenly realizing reading it back again, um, you actually recognize that word. I, I, I so went much. or you went yeah. Mm. exactly yeah so uh, yeah i went to the shop um so there's that um obviously constantly listening to raiden the um i'm um, here and at least um because i'm working from home at the moment uh, i have the opportunity to do that mm. you know to just let it sit there in the background and play um and i've picked up a few little phrases um, and it's certainly I'm being able to pick up a lot more now as well, rather than just hearing the word August, which, which I think is all I heard the first time round when I was listening to it, um, and how often it's said. And it's, it's probably the same with everyone. You know, it's probably one of the first words they probably hear and pick up because it's 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 said so often. Yeah, or they um, chop it in half, don't they? Gus, or yeah, it's, it's, that's it. Yeah, yeah think, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and it's, it's when you sort of even, um, I think I, I watched, I haven't got around to watching all of it, but um, Klondike um, on, on TG mm -hmm. Car. I uh, managed to get two episodes in, but it's, it's, it's when you can hear a full sentence or a full phrase, um, even if you don't understand it, you know, Kada Harla, and, and then you find out what it actually means, and then it means what's happened. You know, that's kind of, you know, a little kind of, um star for for actually managing to pick up something even if you don't understand it because you've you know learning how to pronounce stuff you kind of you can work it out yeah so fantastic um i love your steps and to finish off peter if you had there um 
I don't know them off the top of my head, but you had made note of some values or virtues um, to enable Gaelga Gach Law Irish every day. So you might be searching. You brought it up. We have a live forum chat in Bite Size Pubble usually every week where it's not video, but it's typed. And it works quite well with the forum software for members. And you brought it back up again then, which reminded me. So, do you have it there yeah. in front of you? I have. I have. Yeah. Indeed. Um, for a moment there, I thought you were putting me on the spot. But, um, because I think after speaking with one of the other pub members, I thought um, it actually sounds OK. So I thought I would actually copy it and, and, and stick it in a place in my notes in my phone. So I could actually have it and, and you know. Um, it's something probably could uh, maybe print off and stick somewhere. But mm. um, I mean, I suppose the ones I came up with were um, patience, forgiveness, competitiveness, communication, uh, and bravery. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? So they were they were the sort of the five things I, I thought of. I'm sure there's probably loads more. And what you does know, that, that, that... what does each one mean to you? Um. Well, like I suppose I can read out here that the fact that, you know, patience, I suppose, you know, one, it's not a quick journey, which I think we've already sort of said that if you come into this thinking that you're going to um, speak Irish um, sort of within a few months or a year, um, yeah. unlike uh, that uh, video that relates to that, that's, uh, I think, chap coming from China who managed to learn Irish in, in about six months and no one spoke it when he came to Dublin. You um, mean it's an mm -hmm. Is that it? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, right. Which was, yeah, very good um so understanding um i'm not sure i think i might have um I'm not sure if i skipped over that one but oh, it's yeah. i think a lot is required you know that that obviously and that will come in time as well um you know in, in relation to sort of understanding sort of the, the verbs the the grammar pronunciation not necessarily in that order you know so forgiveness i suppose really that comes down to kind of forgiving yourself yeah as well as others you know mm. that uh, not to um i suppose um berate or belittle anyone who's having a ha having a go you know because mm. basically you were probably at their stage at some point you know if you're more yeah. experienced um so communication well i mean that's down to bio and actually and it actually makes it more enjoyable to, to actually to to learn in the group and speak and and i think as well sometimes people you don't always actually see what's right in front of you until somebody actually asks the question and then you realize that's actually quite obvious. You know, why don't I think of that? New so, patterns uh, or explanations, right? Yeah. Um, mm. You know, and you, you do see a few patterns in relation to um, word, or, a word order. Um, um, I think one that I, I, I recognized recently was um, I live in wherever, or how to say, you know, Tommy McConaughey, or basically Tommy McCullough. That, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's a pattern there in relation. I'm to living sitting. or I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and excuse me. and the same goes for um, I think sitting and and lying as well. Tommy and Mahi, so, Tommy so, and Mali. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there's a bit of a pattern there. So yeah, it's recognizing that. Um, I suppose. And finally, the last thing I came up with was bravery, and it's just brave enough to, to give it a go. Um, and I don't think I would have be here if it wasn't for for that. So maybe I should have put that at the top. Yeah, um, you know, um, because taking having a go and going in, you know, um, definitely sort of has helped me no end. Um, and I think now um, my next step is maybe may well do uh, with taking lessons. Um, and um, I've got a number for actually uh, a friend in Cove um, who I know works in the Gwale Skull in Cove. And I don't know whether they will be interested or not. I don't know. Um, or maybe they can point me in the right direction to someone, mm -hmm. you know. So we'll have to we'll you have can to see. Ask the question. Yeah, I love the bravery one because I I know that each person who shows up to something like bite size bio, especially for the first time, but every time, each time, there's bravery, there's courage involved. There, you're putting yourself on the line. You're naturally putting yourself out there to be a bit judged by others or yes. to be corrected. So it is finding what the brave step is for you in yeah. the given context. And that's different for each person. Yeah, I think that comes up a lot, even sort of with some podcasts related to the language and, and just having a go and 
don't be afraid of of making mistakes mm. um, because you know there may well be sort of traditionalists that say if you're not prepared to say it at all then don't say it yeah um, but then you know how are you going to learn nah. sometimes you, you learn from <laughs> don't agree yeah. <laughs> no you, you learn f you learn um, from your mistakes um, mm. and maybe sometimes when you do make mistakes they're, they're the ones that you actually um, sink in a bit more because you've learned how to say it correctly yeah you know? Yeah, fantastic. So, well, Peter, I have to do a shout out to people who are listening to this because you mentioned the labeling that you do. Uh, we have a book, uh, an ebook called The Ten Secrets to Gaelga Gach Law, How to Achieve Gaelga Gach Law. And the very first secret in there is about labeling and it's got some tips about what to do. And then nine more secrets to how to achieve Gaelga Gach Law. So you go to bitesize.irish slash secrets and there's a Gaelga Gach Law email series there for people with some worksheets as well. So if you're watching this and you're an active learner of Gaelga already, I think you should check it out. So Peter, it was really nice of you, uh, you to come here today and to spend your time and talk through us. So no problem. Uh, 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 five or a bit. A five or a bit, yeah. Nisha Neil Shea Five <laughs> as you might say uh, before. Or or, or Neil Neil Shea Five. <laughs> so if you want to be a member of Bite Size Bubble like Padder, what you can do is sign up as a Grow member of Bite Size Irish. That plan has access to Bite Size Pubble, Bite Size Bio, and Bite Size Coursey, that's private learning community and uh, weekly or regular video practice calls for conversation in the Irish language and online courses that you can take in your own time. So if you're not up for trying that out yet, we've got Taster membership, which you can take for free. And even before that, we've got Gaelge Gach Law emails that you can take for free. So there's a link to all that under this video.